Ground Zero by Susan Boyan About the Author Susan Byrne has worked as a journalist and has also published book reviews and personal essays as well as three well-received novels, including The Ghost at the Table, 2006, and Lucille, 2010. She currently teaches English at Boston College. In the following essay, which appeared on the New York Times, Opt Page in April 2002, Byrne describes a personal pilgrimage to the formal site of the World Trade Center in the New York City. Background on the terrorist attacks of 9-11 The September 11, 2001, terrorist attacks that destroyed the Twin Towers of the New York's World Trade Center and severely damaged the Pentagon stunned the nation and the world. People watched in horror as camera crews recorded the collapse of the towers while victims jumped to their deaths. The three hijacked aircraft that crashed into these targets and a fourth that crashed into a field in rural Pennsylvania caused the deaths of some 3,000 people. An outpouring of grief, outrage, fear, and patriotism consumed the nation in ensuing months. While many, like Byrne, have felt drawn to visit Ground Zero, as it has come to be called, some family members of victims, particularly of those who, whose, un- whose unidentified remains are still at the site, have expressed concern that it not become a tourist attraction. A memorial at the site includes two huge reflecting pools where the original train tower stood. The names of the nearly 3,000 people who were killed in September 11 attacks in the New York, Pennsylvania and Washington, D.C. are inscribed around the edges of the pools. An underground museum Scheduled to open in 2012, will house exhibits that conveys the experiences of responders, victims, and witnesses. Summary in English In this essay, Susan Byrne describes a visit to the site of the Twin Tower of the World Trade Center some six months after the devastating terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001. It is interesting to note that no way in the essay does she refer to attacks themselves. Only in paragraph 12, to the terrible images of the tower collapsing, she assumes that the reader's recognition of the event that led to the collapse. Burns' first response is that there is nothing to see at the site, but the absence of what was once there. Then, what is not there becomes visible. As she begins to notice various signs that recall the collapse in the paragraph 8-9. Finally, she is able to find a vantage point from which she can actually see down into the pit which turns into a highly sobering moment before the day flowed back into itself, so that the space fills up again. Bun is particularly adept at using adjectives in this piece. One cold morning in March, Susan Byrne visited Manhattan, where there used to be a World Trade Center. There, she saw a big crowd of visitors. There were people from different countries like Germany, Italy, Japan, Norway, etc. People of different age groups, professions, and nationalities had come there to see the place where terrorists had attacked and killed thousands of innocent lives. The tourists had come there to see the zero ground, where there was nothing to see. Looking at the empty space, Byrne says that she could see something else, which others couldn't see. 
that something which comes to her mind becomes more vivid and concrete to her. Even in that absence, she sees that the place has enchanted thousands of people around the world to see that very empty place. Something that pulled these people there was no other thing than their feelings and emotions. People come there in mournful and difficult situations. Feeling of fear and terror, joys and happiness pull people together. This is exactly what Burn C. All these people are now united by their simple desire to see the place where one of the devastating or disaster occur in our history. At first, the ground zero looks like a construction site with wooden scaffolding, cranes, bulldozers, forklifts, trailers and construction workers and heaps of trash piled around. The noises of trucks are heavy machineries and the crowd of people working on the construction site give the impression that this place is no longer silent or empty. When one sees this place alive again, the absence gets materialized. In other words, this is the moment where absence takes a material form, when what is not there becomes visible. In the surrounding, you see the skyscraper covered in black plastic, the boarded windows, the steel rods of the destroyed garden, the broken steps and trash piled up in the corner, the firefighters, the ambulance and the police on every corner. All these activities and things you see make the people and place look much similar to the business that used to be there before the Twin Tower had fallen. In the little cemetery, near the church, you can see tulip flowers growing up. There is much more than this to see for the visitors. In iron fence, one can see dried pine, weights, banners, ribbon, laminated poems and prayers and photographs with a flower, baseball hats, rosary beads, teddy bears and flags are everywhere. American flags fluttering in the breeze, flags on posters, flags on t-shirts, flags on hats, flags tied to the handles of baby stores. An elderly man tells that he had watched those towers being built. It was an empty space then, and then two towers were erected. Burns sees a connection between the past emptiness and the present emptiness. Similarly, the author also sees their connection between the people's crowd during the busy hours that used to be before the towers collapsed and the present day of busy people of visitors around the world. People who visit this place will feel sad and unhappy. No one ever imagined that such disaster will occur. Many people who visit Ground Zero must have that terrible image which they saw in TVs and newspapers. The Twin Towers burnings, black fumes of smoke rising towards the sky, people jumping from the windows to death, and the collapsing of towers. This terrible disaster turned the skyscrapers into nothing and made the place empty again in front of their eyes. It wasn't easy for the writer to get the ticket or pass to see the Ground Zero. After she has seen Ground Zero, she finds herself being carried out by the crowd towards the door. It occurred to her that a form of repopulation was taking effect. With so many visitors to this place, thousands of visitors, all of them coming to see the wide emptiness, where so many were lost and by the act of their visiting, whether they are motivated by curiosity or horror or reverence or grief, or by something confusing that combines them all, the space fills up again. 